We now take portable gaming for granted. There are millions of games available on our phones, and we can now access our console games from these handy devices as well. Nintendo is a dominant force in this increasingly competitive market with the versatile Switch. But three decades ago, they started as the only shop in town, and it was glorious. The black and white Game Boy let us take some of the big end's biggest properties on the road, and while its games don't look as good as those on the NES, this little system the size of a sandwich churned out some titles that we still consider to be the pinnacle of their respective franchises. Its library is full of joyful memories, but which entries still make us happy today? It may not have taken the world by storm like Tetris, but Dr. Mario contributed to defining that synergy between portable devices and casual puzzle games. The process of dropping shaded capsules to eliminate matching viruses is easy to understand and quick to get into while riding the bus or taking a lunch break. Beginners will simply start at the top and work their way down, but soon you start to see ways to wedge capsules into gaps further below, make sideways matches, and eventually create towering combos for chain reactions. Sometimes the most challenging thing is just to figure out exactly what to do with a pill that doesn't match any of the viruses that are currently open. It's a bit slower paced than Tetris, but at times that works in its favor, and Dr. Mario is always an easy go-to pick whenever you're not sure what to play. Number nine. If you want to see just what exactly the Game Boy is capable of in terms of visuals, look no further than Donkey Kong Land. At first glance, it may appear to be a straight port of the acclaimed Donkey Kong Country originally for the Super Nintendo, but the Wizards at Rare pulled off another magic trick. Utilizing many of the same graphical achievements and gameplay mechanics that made its console counterpart a breakout hit, Donkey Kong Land continues the series' proud platforming tradition on Nintendo's handheld device. It would go on to spawn a trilogy of portable installments that are still considered some of the Game Boy's best platformers. Number 8 What we now know as Seiken Densetsu, or the first game in the Mana series, it's surprising just how much Final Fantasy there is in Final Fantasy Adventure. Many of the character and town designs are almost exact replicas of early Final Fantasy games, and there are references to airships and more. Still, Adventure is distinctly different, playing more like a Zelda game with real-time combat, a tiled overworld, and sprawling dungeons. But with the addition of RPG elements like experience levels, stat-based equipment, and HP, you quickly begin to gain numerous weapons, such as an axe and a chain, which not only have different roles in combat, but traversal abilities, such as chopping paths through forests or crossing over gaps. The story is immediately tragic as you and a mysterious girl move from one town to the next, trying to learn more about your destinies and the Tree of Mana. The brisk pace keeps you constantly moving, encountering new dungeons, items, and companions. And it's a fun journey through and through. Ever since its debut in 1981, the Donkey Kong franchise has been synonymous with Nintendo. After a few ports and spin-offs, the Great Ape's original design made its way to the Game Boy in 1994. As a nod to the arcade classic, the Game Boy version starts off with the same four familiar stages. However, once you complete these, things really open up as you travel to several new locales, like a city and a forest. Mario has a few new abilities, like being able to climb vines like DK Jr. and backflip to reach higher ground. The levels themselves are small bite-sized stages that take advantage of Mario's toolkit, while constantly introducing new challenges to keep things feeling fresh throughout. Levels are also short and sweet, making it an ideal companion when you're away from home. Number 6 There are only a few precious things we can all agree on, but one of those things is that Wario is underappreciated. He may be crude when compared to other Nintendo characters, but he has unquestionably starred in some fantastic games, including the very first Wario Land. 
The game immediately conveys tremendous personality, from its large, expressive sprites to the gratifying smack sound that occurs when ramming into an enemy. Like many Mario games, Wario Land is easy to immediately understand and feels creative with a familiar template. Special helmets power up Wario in some impressive ways, such as a dragon helmet that allows the big-nosed Mischief Maker to blast a stream of fire. Wario may never be as lauded as his peers, but we know in our hearts he's earned his keep. Number five. Sometimes all you need to make something great even better is just a little help from a few friends. It's even more appreciated when those friends just so happen to be some of the most adorable animals ever seen in a video game. They are Rick the Hamster, Koo the Owl, and Kine the Ocean Sunfish. Beyond their inherent, irresistible charm, they dramatically impact the flow of a typical Kirby adventure. They radically change how Kirby travels through a level and further modify powers absorbed from enemies. For example, Koo shoots three spinning feathers with the cutter power-up instead of just a single blade, and an even better example, Rick uses the umbrella power-up to balance Kirby above his nose. Perfection. Number four. Mario Island has been taken over by Wario in his first appearance ever, and it's up to Mario to reclaim his castle. A wide variety of zones like Tree Zone and Space Zone contribute to a steady sense of adventure and variety, while the bosses of each help add even more charming flavor. The controls remain solid even by Super Mario's high standards. Swimming in goo over spikes or navigating through hostile waters is vintage Mario, and the relative short length of each stage is perfectly suited for the Game Boy. Jolly minigames round out the experience, and the final showdown with Wario will no doubt leave a lasting impression. Number three! Hi, Rick Mail here. I don't know if you're like me, immensely rich, talented, handsome. Isn't it a bore? Well, I found the answer. Zelda Link's Awakening from Nintendo. You play a medieval elf named Link. You travel through many worlds, meeting endless characters on your eternal adventures. So hey, next time you're Rick Mail, why not try? Zelda Link's Awakening. I think you'll like it. Ciao. Zelda, an all-world and exhaustible Nintendo. The Legend of Zelda already proved its staying power by delivering breathtaking adventures on the NES and SNES, but the question of whether or not Nintendo could deliver a similar experience on a handheld lingered. All doubts were quickly put to rest with the arrival of Link's Awakening, an adventure every bit as legendary as its acclaimed predecessors. Yet this sequel remains special for many reasons, none of which involve Zelda, Hyrule, or the Triforce. Link's Awakening weaves a captivating and emotional story set on a vibrant island with some of the most memorable characters in the series, while still retaining the classic Zelda feel of exploring a fantastic overworld and battling through perilous dungeons. It stands as not only one of the best Game Boy games, but one of the best Zelda games. years later and this franchise is still making headlines. Now you can see straight through the board in VR or challenge 98 other people at once, but on the Game Boy, your only enemies in Tetris are your skill level and patience. Without a big screen or fancy colors and with only a handful of musical tracks, the original portable version still has everything it needs to make it one of the most challenging puzzle games ever created. Tetris slams the other entries further down the list because it's the most replayable game on the system, and it's just as thrilling now to reach for the highest score as it was in the 80s. The many sequels that followed made their trials more accessible, and in some cases, easier. So if you're eager to see where the craze began, test your might against this monochromatic masterpiece. People complain that Pokemon doesn't evolve enough with each new installment, and the original RPG might be to blame. Red and Blue was so incredibly ahead of its time in the mid-90s that perhaps the series hasn't felt the need to push itself beyond such an infectious paradigm. 100 plus monsters to catch and control, 8 gems to challenge, over a dozen creature types to memorize, and an inspiring story full of twists and turns, all crammed into one of two tiny cartridges. The original adventure has been remade more than once, including last year's Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, so there's clearly a magical charm imbued in this installment that refuses to stay contained. 
You don't even need to play the remakes to feel it. From the charismatic Pokemon designs and the sound of their custom cries to the beloved soundtrack that can be equally haunting and delightful, there's still so much here to enjoy. Easy Allies creates shows, podcasts, reviews, and more thanks to generous viewers just like you. If you like what you see, check out patreon.com slash easyallies to help us make more. For just $1 a month, you can gain access to weekly updates, spoiler discussions, and exclusive shows.